In this video, we're going to look at different views of the spinal cord and go through the parts. Uh, we'll actually look at a, more than one model of the spinal cord so that you're comfortable with the different models that are available in the lab. Okay, so let's look at this cross-section transverse cut. Uh, here you have the spinal nerve. You can see it over here also. Remember, spinal nerve is a mixed nerve, so it contains sensory and motor neurons. Where there's neurons split into sensory and motor, right in here, you have the dorsal or posterior root, which is going to be sensory, and then you have the ventral or anterior root, which is going to be motor. Uh, the easiest way to tell the difference between the dorsal and ventral side is to look for this kind of bulge, and that is called the dorsal or posterior root ganglion. And the reason it exists, if you remember from lab, is this contains the cell bodies of sensory neurons and so since the cell bodies are thicker than axons or dendrites you get that little bulge so again you get the spinal nerve the dorsal or posterior root the dorsal or posterior root ganglion and here you have the ventral or anterior root within the spinal cord when we look at a cross-section you have this gray matter and remember it's gray because the parts do not contain myelin sheath um, and you have these horns. You have these horns. Once you know ventral and dorsal sides or anterior posterior, then these should be pretty easy to name. This is going to be the ventral or anterior gray horn. And here's the other one. And then you also have the dorsal or posterior gray horn. You'll notice that the ventral gray horns are bigger than the dorsal gray horns because these contain cell bodies of motor neurons because this root here, the ventral or anterior root is going to be um, motor neurons. So again, you have the dorsal or posterior gray horns, the ventral or anterior gray horns. Also in the structure we have what is called the anterior median fissure, which you can't see as well on this model. You can't see as well the posterior median sulcus, which would be located in here. Now all this stuff that has this paint on it, that's just to show you different tracks, which you'll learn about probably more in lecture than lab. But this is all white matter. If it wasn't painted, it would be all white matter. And those are tracks, and those, those are the elevators that take information to and from the spinal cord and the brain. So this is one model, uh, one more structure here. This connection between the two sets of horns is going to be the gray commissure, and then in the center of that you'll see a little hole, and that's going to be the central canal. Um, that's one of the areas in the spinal cord where cerebral spinal fluid will flow through. So this is one model that you'll see of the spinal cord. This is another one that you may use. So let me just go through this one. Here's your spinal nerve, here's your dorsal or posterior root, and there's your dorsal or posterior root ganglia. There's your ventral root. Okay. Here are your gray horns, your dorsal or posterior gray horn, your anterior or ventral gray horn. Here is your gray commissure, and there's your central canal right there. Here you can see the anterior median fissure, and up here would be the posterior median sulcus. Okay, so same structures, just a little bit different model. Um, so again, you need to review both of them just to make sure that you're comfortable. This one makes a little more sense. The white matter is actually almost white, um, or close to being white. All right, let's look at the um, full spinal cord model that you'll be working from. Um, we're not doing brain here, but obviously this is the cerebrum, this is the cerebellum. Up here you have the cervical plexus, over here, and here you have the brachial plexus, okay, and that's going to serve the arms. And when you come down the arm, and this should be reviewed by now, um, you have the radial nerve and the ulnar nerve. Again, you can't see their hand here, but they're in the anatomical position. So you got to go back and review that. Make sure you understand that the thumbs are out, and that's going to be the radial is going to be lateral, and the ulnar is going to be medial. Now, if we look at the lower part of the body here again, now you can see a little bit better. You can't see their thumb there, but there's your radial and your ulnar nerves. Here you have the lumbar plexus, 
and a major nerve that comes off the lumbar plexus is the femoral nerve and you can identify that pretty easily because you can see it comes down right here by the femur. Below that you have the sacral plexus and the main nerve that comes off that is the sciatic nerve and you can't see it but it would actually go down and branches all the way down through the foot. So again let's do these real quickly. Again you have the cervical plexus up high, the brachial plexus at the shoulder level, to the nerves down here, radial and ulnar nerve. Then you have the lumbar plexus, the nerve you need to know that comes off that is the femoral nerve. Here you have the sacral plexus and the sciatic nerve is going to be a main nerve that comes out of that plexus. So again, review these parts of the spinal cord and take the practice test, make sure that you're comfortable with the information.